and what's up guys welcome back this is part one of a three-part series on how to paint the daydream from the Malifaux hide and seek crew in this video we'll be looking at how to approach the skin we'll start off with some brain eater azure from the fantasy and games range if you don't have that you can get something similar by mixing a small amount of games workshop demonette hide into some fenrisian gray just go ahead and splat that onto the skin this paint actually covers quite well so you can probably get away with just one coat i'm using a raphael number one here which kind of shows just how small the model is when it makes a number one look massive. Alright so once that dries we're just going to wash with Games Workshop Drakenhof Nightshade. We want to end up with quite a strong shadow colour so be quite liberal with the wash. Now we'll add a bit of water to our base colour and start to build up definition on the skin. You want the paint to be essentially a heavy glaze consistency so that it's thin enough that you can play about with the transparency but not so thin that you don't have any control over it. We'll just pick out all the little raised areas leaving the recesses nice and dark. The process here is going to be pretty similar to the demon on the dreamer but we'll be using different colours and I'm going to add a few effects here and there to give a more of a sinister vibe. So once you've picked out all the little details, we'll begin to build up our highlights. Mix a little Vallejo red beige into your base colour and we'll start to apply it to the model. Again, I'm using a heavy glaze consistency so that I can drag the paint over the surface, creating a subtle transition between the colours. Using red beige here is really going to help us get a strong contrast on the skin. It'll end up being a lot more interesting than just using white, so we're going to have a complementary contrast between that pale violety blue and the orangey beige. And and also because we're using cold colours in the shadows and warm colours in the highlights it will give us two levels of contrast which is a really good way of pushing the contrast a little bit further and that's really quite important especially on models that are as small as this one. Alright so we'll just add some more red beige to the mix and we'll continue with another round of highlights. Again I'm using a heavy glaze consistency to give me more control over the transparency. So I'm just trying to lighten the areas around the centre of the face. And then on the lower half here I'm pulling the pigment up over his belly letting it gather near the middle point just under the centre of his chest and I'm trying to be careful that I'm not losing any of the detail in the shadows. I'm also trying to work on a smaller surface area than the last step so that we build up a transition between the colours. So go ahead and stick some more red beige in there and we'll keep building the highlights. We'll start on the belly here. You can see I'm trying to be super careful not to lose anything from the last step and we are working on a really small surface now, just around that centre point on his stomach. I'll also add a couple of little dots here and there just to help give it more texture. These models are really nicely sculpted but they are a bit flat as far as texture goes so it's good to add some of your own just to help give it more life. And we'll do his wee boobs as well. I'm trying to build up the colour around the middle of each one, just around the highest point of the surface. And I'll add a few more wee dots down here just for good measure. Alright, so we'll go back to work on the face now, building up the colour around the centre area. If you're wondering, I'm using a WAMP freehand brush for this. It's essentially a size 0, it's got a really good point but you can see even with the 0 the brush looks quite big next to the model. So if you're painting this model and you've, you're struggling with the 0 feel free to drop down to a double 0, that might help with it. And we'll do his little knock knees as well. I guess he didn't get enough vitamin D when he was growing up and he's got a pretty bad case of rickets going on there. It's either that or he's dying to go to the toilet. 
Alright guys, so just keep building up that contrast in the highlights. So here we'll be picking out his belly button by painting a very small line on the lower edge. So it's actually part of the sculpt, but you can barely see it. It looks pretty cool like that, but I think we can bump up the contrast a little more with some more red beige in there. Yeah, that looks a bit better now. For the last few highlights, we'll add some Vallejo Ivory into our highlight mix, just to help push that contrast up another level. Our highlights are so small now that we're going to apply them with just little tiny dots. You get to see me stuff up the eyebrows here. I was a little too far away from the model to see what I was doing. I just totally painted over all the previous steps with my clumsy highlights here. I've left this part in as an example of what not to do. I just I repainted this part just off camera to fix it. So we'll do the back of his head now and I'm going to use stippling to build up some of the rounded highlights. The first step is to apply lots of little dots with our first highlight colour, so our base colour mixed with a bit of red beige, and I'm just bouncing the tip of the brush over the surface. I'm still using a heavy glaze for this so that I can alter the level of transparency, so if I want an area to be more opaque, I'll just apply more dots on that part. We'll keep doing this, adding more and more red beige to the colour, and each new colour will focus on a smaller surface area building up a colour transition at the top of his head. At this stage the skin will look a little boring, but we're going to apply some colour glazes soon which will change it quite radically. Alright, so the next step is to take some Fantasy and Games Haster Purple and we're going to mix in a bit of black giving us a really rich dark plum colour and we'll just add some water to dilute this down to a thin glaze consistency. If you don't have Haster Purple, you could get a similar colour by mixing a little Games Workshop Rhinox Hide into some Wasdaka Red. Now, with a very small amount on the brush, we'll glaze up over the underside of the face, up to the edge of the cheekbone here and we'll build this up over a few layers. and we'll do exactly the same thing on the other side. Again, this is going to help to increase contrast, but it's also going to give us more of a variation in the colour of the skin, which is going to help make it look a bit more interesting. And we're going to do the same thing here on the body, pushing the glaze into the shadows at the side of the chest and belly. We'll also run some into the shadows around the muscles. Basically, anywhere we have a shadow, we'll try to intensify it with our glaze. So go ahead and add some more black to the glaze now and we'll use that to block in the eye sockets.
All right, so now we're going to add a more obvious color variation by overglazing some areas with just Hastor Purple by itself. We won't add any black this time, just add some water to the Hastor Purple so that it's a thin glaze consistency. And with a small amount on the brush, we're going to glaze this over the nose, bringing a bit of color into the face here. All right, I think that's looking pretty good there. Now we're going to do the same thing on the tail, glazing up over the surface towards the tip. Just build this up over a couple of layers, letting it dry each time. And we'll do the same thing on the ears, this time just pulling the glaze down to the tips. We'll finish off with another little glaze over his cheeks, giving them a bit of colour. Alright, so moving on, we'll finish off the ears by painting on a sort of a ribbed effect. Just mix some ivory into your base colour and we'll paint on little vertical lines across the width of the lower half of each ear. Ignore what I do on this ear, I had planned on doing something else and then I changed my mind. Just try and use the paint that's already on there as your shadow colour and paint on highlight lines, leaving a little gap between each one. Then you're simply going to build up the highlight by adding a little more ivory each time, drawing the highlights to the lower edge of each ear. Alright guys, so I hope you give that a go. If you do, send me some pictures, I'd be interested in seeing the results. If you would like to help support the creation of these videos, you can do so by clicking the link in the description box below and signing up to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Patrons get various benefits including early access to videos, the chance to have their models included in my critique series, PDF guides and much more. If you can't afford it or you simply don't want to, you can still help the channel out by liking and sharing the video or by visiting visiting the affiliate links in the description box below. Thanks again, bye for now.